honestly, I don't think there's enough golden apples in the world to deal with what I'm dealing with right now. Hello, everybody! Kelsey the Powerfly here, and today I'm doing something that I haven't done in quite a while, and that is a mod showcase, and I'm super excited because these are really fun, and I haven't done one in ages. And as you know, I do like to put in a little bit of extra effort into my mod showcases, but today I've really gone the extra mile. I have built a whole house just for this because, frankly, I couldn't find a village. And also, I have come up with a little story to go with our mod review just to keep things a little bit more interesting, so hopefully you enjoy that. If you do, be sure to let me know in the comments. Now, without further ado, Let's get on with what we're doing. The mod we are reviewing today is the Extra Creatures mod, and it was made by Solus125. So this is just a little house I built. It's pretty compact, so we ended up with this kind of strange carpet spiral staircase. That's a thing. There's a little seating area in here. And then this is the main room with all of the basic amenities of Minecraft and such things. Got a little porch out here. Obviously the house is not the least bit important to the mod, but I worked hard on it, so you guys might as well take a little bit of a look at that. But anyway, to get things started today, let's see what we have here in the mailbox. Yes guys, this is a mailbox. It's very high tech, I know. But, that's it. Ooh, we have some emeralds, a catalog, and... A book and quill. This is probably a letter from somebody. Let's see what it says here. Hey Kelsey, I've got a favor to ask you. I've decided that the village needs more protection and I want to get a guard dog. Which is in quotes. So maybe they're not really thinking of a dog per se. I found this catalog of cool new mobs, but I'm far too busy to check them all out myself. Can you help me? Just tell me which one is the beefiest. I don't care how aggressive the mobs are, though. It's nothing a little training can't fix. Thanks so much. Here's some emeralds for your trouble. Frank. Okay, so... We've got our mission for today. We have a catalog, which I'm not actually going to read, because I have some stuff set up in the back to take care of this. And catalogs are, in fact, very boring. So what we're actually going to be doing is looking over all of the cool new mobs that are added by this mod and we are going to be testing them for their beefiness. But first, there are a couple other things with this mod and we might as well go over them. There's a few blocks and items added so we're just going to take care of those first and foremost. Just kind of get that out of the way. The blocks we have are quicksand, poison quicksand, which I apparently forgot to add the word poison. It's very important though. Fire block, ender block, freezing block, and the evil fake gold block that looks exactly like regular gold. And in the chest we have some swords, which are actually made from these materials here. These are made just like regular swords, except with freezing shards, ender shards, or fire shards. And then we also have this demonic trident, which is actually not made from the ores. It is made from a bunch of different mob drops, which we will be going over when we get the mobs, but it is a weapon. So I figured I'd put it here with the rest of them, and these are what we are going to be using to test the mobs. And these guys, I just want to quickly show you the recipe for them, because they do have a very strange recipe. The two are basically the same, except the poison one has spider eyes instead of clay. And these things are actually very interesting tools as well. They are the head cutters, and they each have a certain chance of dropping a mob head when you kill something that has a head like a, that drops, like a zombie or a skeleton or something like that. So I got a few zombies to test. And I also got some chickens to test the blocks because some of them do some pretty weird stuff and I will take a couple head choppers as well. So basically the quicksand, um, I really don't want to test it because I'm in survival mode and I'm not actually sure I'll even be able to get out if I go in. So we're going to use the chicken here. And as you can see, that chicken is very slowly and agonizingly going to sink into that. It's super annoying. It's basically like a cobweb, but it looks like sand. And if you get stuck in there, you're not really likely to come back out. And I think the chicken is not going to make it. And this here is the poisonous version. It's the same as the regular one, except for you get horrible, horrible poison. 
And let me see if I can just jump on it really quick. It gives you terrible poison. I can't really see very well what this is, but it gives you horrible poison four for like eight seconds. It's really, really awful, although the chicken seems to be just fine for some reason. The fire block, as you might expect, sets you on fire. It's basically like a magma block, but shifting will not protect you. And first death of the day, we have not even gotten to the mobs yet. So as you can see, some of these blocks are really kind of evil. They're kind of horrible. Now the ender block, it will teleport mobs that step on it, but not players. So once again, we've got the chicken. I have no idea where that chicken went, by the way. Let's just see if we can locate any of the chickens at all. Nope, they're long gone. So apparently this teleports the mobs quite far. And the freezing block, which, as you might expect, is also pretty horrible. If you or any mob steps on this one, you get slowness 4 and mining fatigue 4 for, looks like, about 4 or 5 seconds. Luckily, it's not very long, but this block kind of sucks. And finally, we have the evil fake gold block. This, there is literally no purpose to this whatsoever other than to be annoying. There is a mob that drops these. They are named exactly like gold blocks and ingots. They look exactly like gold blocks and ingots. There's no way to tell the difference between these until you try to craft something and realize that they are completely and utterly useless. So these are just for being annoying. Although I guess you could still like build a house out of them. It still looks pretty posh, but this gold is fake. So that's most of that. So I think what I'm going to do now is just quickly test out the head chopper here. It shouldn't matter if these guys burn a little bit. We're just going to see if we can get a zombie head real quick. I figured I'd test these out because they are part of the mod. But don't worry guys, the interesting stuff is coming later. Alright guys, um, I should probably tell you that my computer kind of really hates this mod. And it just had like a 40 minute fit over it. So two things to consider here first. Please note that I really am going the extra mile to show you guys this mod. Primarily because I've already put hours of time into preparing this showcase. And I'm not going to let my annoying potato of a computer mess that up. And also just keep in mind that it's possible your computer might also not like this mod. So proceed with caution. It's not going to like blow it up or corrupt it or anything. But... It could potentially cause you to have to restart your Minecraft or your computer or your world could get corrupted. Because for some reason, the zombies, when I was spawning them, it corrupted my world. And I literally had to go in with NBT Editor, find what chunk I was on, which is what took the, like, like the whole half hour, and then get rid of the zombies and all the other entities and junk that were in there just to be able to get my world loadable again. So you might want to be careful with these. I don't know if this is if these tools are the reason that my world got corrupted or if something else bad happens. I'd be careful with these just in case. And if you do want to use those, I recommend that you back up your world first just because things get a little dicey. Let's just move on to the mobs. Now as you recall, I have all of the mobs in the quote unquote catalog for Frank, and we are going to test them and rank them based upon their beefiness. And that is what I have over here. This is what I like to call Kelsey's beefiness index. And as you can see, everything has been visually labeled with both a color and a steak rating. The least beefy is Do You Even Beef Bro, followed by Discount Steak, The Whole Cow, because cows are made of beef, and finally, The Beefinator 9001, which you will note is in fact over 9,000. So basically these are pretty subjective. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test all the mobs and then I'm just going to kind of subjectively select which beefiness category I think they belong in. And the beefiest of all will become Frank's new pet slash village guard dog. So I say we get this party started. All right. So the first mob we are going with is in fact the charger. Now, as you can see here, I have a whole bunch of junk in this chest, and what this is, is my attempt to visually display all the different aspects of the mob that were mentioned on the mod page. So, this is the charger, and he can spawn in pretty much any biome. He can spawn both day and night, and he will drop seeds upon death. And I believe this is actually the reason that I have all the weird ground over here. If I spawn this guy, 
he will of course come and try to murder me. So if you're if you look closely though, you can see that he actually will take the texture of pretty much any block that he steps on and I've decided that I probably should get some form of armor because these mobs are just kind of eating me for breakfast at the moment. So do be careful. They're very dangerous. Not recommended that you fight these guys. No armor. Especially since they are rather quick. So if I spawn him on the wool, he will not actually take the texture of wool. I put down a few blocks that weren't in the mod page just to see if he would actually take the texture of those. So he doesn't seem to be going for wool. But he will take the texture of clay and obsidian and glass and all sorts of other things. And apparently he drops flint as well as seeds. I don't know if that was a mistake on the mod page or if I just failed to read that part. So let's just grab a couple more of the seeds. Unfortunately, they will not take the texture of diamonds, which I think is kind of sad. But he'll take the texture of pretty much everything else. And you can imagine that if you're in a desert or something, it's going to be super annoying when this guy like blends into the sand and then jumps out and tries to kill you. And it seems like the freezing sword actually did slow him down a little bit, so that is something to take into consideration when you are using this particular sword. So, good to know. I'm not really sure where these freezing shards come from. I don't believe they're actually dropped by a mob that I know of. So they might actually be obtainable through loot or not yet implemented. Or there's a mob that drops them and I just did not actually see that on the mod page. So we're going to just keep on going. But as for the beefiness index of the charger, I'm thinking they hit reasonably hard. They have quite a bit of health, but I mean, let's look again. It looks like they have about 20 health, just like the player. They hit like a truck for some reason. I would say they are probably the whole cow. I'm honestly, I'm going the whole cow with these guys. And as far as beefiness goes, I'm not just rating on health, I'm also rating on dangerousness, basically. And these guys, just the fact that they're so fast, and they hurt so much, that's why I am giving them a rating of the whole cow. Seriously, I kind of love this rating system. Alright, next mob on the list is the Chester, and there are several variations of these. This one spawns in any biome, day or night, and it drops a chest. So basically what this is, is an evil, possessed chest that tries to murder you. So let's place one of those down. They don't seem to be nearly as fast as the little blockling guys with the giant noses. So they're pretty slow. They don't really hit too hard either. You can kill them pretty easily. And they drop chests. I'm pretty sure they're only supposed to drop one, but apparently they drop two at the moment. And the reason that I'm pretty sure they're only really supposed to drop one is because there's also a double chester that spawns in the same conditions. And that one's supposed to drop two chests. So let's see what this one drops. See this guy, he has a little bit more health. I think he does a little more damage. Yeah, he does quite a bit more damage. He's a little more dangerous. And he... I swear he just teleported. I'm not sure if that's actually a thing. It looks like he drops two chests as well. No. He dropped four chests, so apparently the little one drops two, the double one drops four, so you can just get a ton of chests from these guys. And as for the rating, I'm probably going to rate the single chest as, do you even beef, bro? Because it was pretty slow, pretty easy to handle, and not much damage with iron armor at least. Probably discount stake for the double chester, just because it didn't do that much damage. I mean, it did actually quite a bit, but it was slow and pretty manageable. So I, I don't think it was as dangerous as the Charger. All right, so the next one on our list is the End Chester, and this one actually spawns exclusively in the end. It should drop an Ender Chest, possibly two. And unfortunately, this particular one actually will teleport as well, which is probably going to be super annoying. And I accidentally put the chest in there instead of the Chester. Whoops. Okay, so this is the, the double chester. I put the wrong one in again. Wow, not not having a good day. Okay, the, the double chester goes in there. The end chester goes right here. As you can see, he looks like a little chest dog. He does not seem to be particularly fast, but he does teleport. 
And he does hurt quite a bit. I can't really tell how much he hurts you simply because I have no health. So I'm just going to quickly respawn here with full health and then see what happens. I should also try out a new sword. I'm going to try the fire sword next. Just to kind of test that out. Let's see how much this guy hurts. With iron armor, he does two hearts. That's not bad. He's pretty slow. Didn't seem to take knockback. I don't really know if that's a sword. Let's do one. Let's do a couple of them, actually. Just kind of see. They seem pretty tame, not too evil. Although they do occasionally teleport, which is annoying. That one actually murdered me. So that is definitely getting him extra points in the beefiness scale. Because he teleported behind me and killed my face. You, sir, are a little monster. Right, so they drop ender chests, and it looks like these guys only drop one rather than two, which is probably reasonable. So I'm thinking with the teleporting thing, I can't really decide. It's between the whole cow and discount stake. I'm probably going to give it discount stake, though, just because it is still kind of slow. But it killed me, so honestly, this guy is going to be the whole cow. Because that, that teleport move can be super deadly if you're not careful. And finally, our last chest is the Xmas Chester. It is modeled after the Christmas chest. It's found only in cold biomes. It spawns only at night. And it, too, will drop a chest. So let's check this one out. As you can see, it looks like the Christmas Easter egg chest does not hit very hard. Or actually is hitting harder than I thought. Okay, about, like, three hit points or something. It's really, really not that beefy. It looks like it drops two chests. That one also is probably just going to be a do you even beef, bro. So that is all of the variations of the chest. There's like a billion of them, so just be careful. Never trust chests. They're obviously waiting to kill you. They probably just get tired of being made to like hold all your garbage and stuff. So this is their chance to get revenge. They will murder you. All right, next we have the mutated creeper, and it spawns in any biome. It did not say whether it spawned day or night, so I'm not really sure on that one. And it will drop gunpowder just like a regular creeper. Now this one... Being a creeper, it's probably going to blow up in my face. I don't want to ruin my nice area, so I'm just going to take this out here towards the desert a little bit. As you can see, it has four heads, and it makes an absolutely massive explosion. And apparently, we have some little blocky monsters, which you're going to get to later. But basically, they're kind of like silverfish. They spawn out of blocks, and there's like an entire army of them here. I mean, silverfish, you usually get like a few that this is ridiculous there's like a billion of those things hopefully they'll just leave me alone so i think we really don't need any further testing on the mutated creeper it is absolutely deadly to both you and your world there is an enormous hole over there that you will never have enough dirt to fill in be super careful of those and if you ever have one anywhere near your house you should probably just kiss your house goodbye because it is it's just a goner that house is just a goner. And also, on the rare occasion that these creepers happen to become charged, you really had better just run for the hills because they are actually three times more powerful when charged. So that would probably basically annihilate your entire Minecraft world. So definitely stay away from the creepers. I'm probably going to have to put them in the Beefinator 9000 category because that blast radius is just massive. Super deadly. Finally, we can move on to the next one, and that is going to be our half zombie. And this is another really funny one. I don't think it's going to be too deadly, but we'll see. It should drop rotten flesh. It did specify what time it spawns, although I assume probably at night for a zombie. And it can be found in pretty much any biome. So the half zombie here, it does not seem to light on fire, so that is rather interesting. So it could possibly spawn during the day. As I said before, not specified. Let's try the Ender Sword, see what this does to it. Teleports it all over creation. Honestly, this is probably the most annoying sword ever. Not sure I could recommend this to anybody just because of the nuisance factor. But the zombie itself is really not that tough. It doesn't burn, which makes it a little better than regular zombies, but it's extremely slow. Honestly, with iron armor, it's not really even damaging me. So this is definitely a very not beefy mob. This is probably, I would say, the weakest mob in the whole mod. At least so far as I've seen. So this is definitely 
do you even beef bro? In fact, it's probably lower the standards of do you even beef bro so much that the other things shouldn't be in there. But I'm not really changing my mind now. So that's a pretty weak mob. If you see one of those, don't really worry too much. You're going to be fine. If, however, you see one of those creepers once again, just get the heck out of there because you will not survive. So here we have a slime clops. They spawn in swamp biomes. It just, I don't know what time. And they should drop some slime balls. So these guys are basically like slimes, but considerably beefier. I believe the smallest version of these has 20 health. And like slimes, they do have bigger versions as well. So we're going to see what this is. I think that's the small one. It has 20 health. It does not seem to hit too hard. It's about normal speed. But that's just the little guy. And the little ones are the ones that drop the slime balls. And as you can see, his eye kind of turned red there. When they get below half health, for the little ones, they get really angry and they get stronger. So be careful of that. Do kill them quickly after that because when they're mad at you, they can hurt a lot more. So here we have a completely Mongo one, which hurts really bad. Just absolutely wrecked my face. You, you really just probably don't want to mess with this guy. kind of wish I had a bow right now. Let's see if I can kill this dude. I don't even know where his hitbox is. He's so massive. This guy just like punches me in the face and everything. And, and wow, like, see this sword? Actually, I can't really tell if it's hurting him because I don't think this damage indicator mod is working that great. But he's... He is very deadly. And then... So that was the biggest size. Then you get the medium ones. And then you'll get the little ones. But needless to say, that is basically a slime giant. I think it has like 80 health or something ridiculous. And hits like an absolute truck. So I think we're just going to spare ourselves the agony again. We're going to peaceful to get rid of these guys. And I can pretty safely say that those are beefiness over 9,000. Those guys, pretty beefy. Would not want to mess with them if I were you. Next mob on the list is the mutated mushroom. And as you can see, it has like a ton of things. This is probably the most interesting one. So first off, you can find these in swamp biomes, forest biomes, mushroom island biomes, and also in the nether. I don't know what time they spawn at when they're in the overworld. Obviously in the nether it doesn't matter because they don't really have day and night. And they will drop one of these three items. Brown ones should drop brown mushrooms, red ones drop red mushrooms, and the nether version, I believe, drops nether wart. So there actually is a version of this that spawns in the nether that is totally different from the overworld and it can't actually exist in the overworld. So I have another portal over here and I think we're going to go ahead and check that one out first. Unfortunately I haven't actually tested this nether portal so I'm really hoping it doesn't like spawn me somewhere in the middle of a lava lake. That would be kind of upsetting. Please don't do that. Alright getting dirt screened here. Okay good we have a nice decent place to kind of work with. I'm probably going to die really fast from this. We're going to spawn a mushroom. As you can see, he's a, he's a little guy, pretty cute, but he, he will actually throw you all over creation. He'll try to throw you into lava and stuff. He's really not that nice of a guy. Let's see if he'll throw me. He's not that good at it, but he does try, and he really doesn't like me very much. Luckily, I believe you can press shift to get off of him, which is probably good. And he drops nether wart, so he is not too beefy when he's in the nether. Pretty tame. Obviously, though, if you are fighting near a bunch of lava and he's able to throw you into the lava, it could be super deadly. But for the most part, that one is pretty, pretty minor. So if you spawn them in the overworld, you can get red and brown versions. And these guys do about normal amount of damage. They don't throw you. But here's the thing. Just add water. Because what's really, really interesting about this mob is that it changes its behavior significantly when it rains. Okay, so over here we have this tiny little spot where it actually is a rainy biome. So we're going to go ahead and spawn a mushroom here. And as you can see, it got incredibly massive. I'm positive this thing is going to hit like a truck. It blows up. It just absolutely annihilates your health bar. Like this thing just punch you across the world. Don't mess with it. And the other thing that really sucks is these guys, when they are in their rain stage, they will not take damage from anything other than magic. So, I mean, these guys are really overpowered. 
you're going to need yourself probably a few hundred of these guys right here. So I'm going to go over there and see if I can actually kill this thing. It may or may not actually be possible. Alright, so I got myself another mushroom. It's trying to murder me right now, so what I'm going to try to do here is get some of these damage potions and chuck them at its face and see if we can actually do some damage. And I'm not even sure this is working because this damage indicator mod just really is kind of buggy, I think. But according to the mod page, this should damage it. Although I'm not really sure it's working. I think it's really only damaging my face. So basically, I'm not even sure these things are killable. They are just absolutely insane. Don't mess with them. And based on their rain state, there is no way these guys are not going in beefiness over 9,000. So that might actually be the craziest mob in the mod, but I'm not actually sure because there are plenty more where that came from. Next, we'll move on to these guys over down here. We have the Knoll, which spawns in forest biomes at an unspecified time of day, and it can drop flint, leather, and logs. I don't really know much about this one, so we'll see just how beefy it is. All right, it's, it's about normal speed. I really, I really don't want to use the Ender Sword. It's super annoying. Whatever, I'm going to use it. Kind of makes a wolf sound, so I feel bad when I hit it. And it seems to do... How much damage here? Okay, it seems to do about one and a half damage with iron armor, so it's... It's not too... Horrible. It doesn't seem to have dropped anything yet, so I don't know what's the deal with that. It is, of course, capable of murdering me because I take all this damage. But I would say that one's not too beefy. There's the stuff. I'm not really sure. I'm probably going to put that in discount stake status. It's not too difficult. And it's really not all that fast either. I don't really know if it's much better than the other chests that I put in Do You Even Beef Bro. But I think it's a little... It hits a little harder. So we're going to just arbitrarily put it in that category. But at any rate, it's definitely not going to be Frank's new pet. Next up is the ghoul, which is found in the nether. And this one's really interesting because it drops the broken demonic trident, which you actually need to make this beefy trident right here. And it also drops fire shards, which can be used to make this fire sword. So the demonic trident, the recipe for this is a bunch of fire shards, some fire imp wings, which we'll be getting to later, an infernus beast's eye, which we'll be getting to later, and the broken trident. So if you want this thing, you're going to have to go and just murder pretty much everything in the nether. So, I think I forgot the spawn eggs. That might be important. So we're going to grab the ghoul, see what he looks like, see what he does to us. Oh my gosh, he is a speed demon! This guy is brutal, and he sets you on fire, and it's just not not a nice dude. And he is just crazy fast. Don't mess with that guy. Let's see how much damage he does, though. So he doesn't really do too much damage with the fire. And he does not have much health, but the speed levels are just over 9,000. I was spamming because I was freaking out about him. So seriously, that guy, definitely the whole cow. And unfortunately, when you go to the nether, you will encounter some of these, and you will probably want to kill them to get this beautiful trident. So here we have the Great Hunger. And this one's a rather interesting mob as well, just because of some of its features, shall we say. It can spawn in any hot biome, so that'll be like your deserts, your mesas, things like that, your savannas. The time of day was not specified. It will drop flint. But here's the thing about it. It's the Great Hunger, so it may not come as a surprise that it has a voracious appetite. It'll eat pretty much anything. It will eat your crops. It will eat your items if you drop them on the ground. And it will even eat your potion effects. So if I take the Strength Potion and put it on, the Great Hunger is going to somehow eat the potion effects. So I'm going to put Strength on. And then what should happen is it's going to take the strength away from me and put it on itself. Which is going to be just awful. It's really bad. I would say probably avoid these things. So this is what it looks like. It's 
Not terribly fast, which is good, because you're definitely going to want to be avoiding these things. So let's see here. If I put down an item, let's see if it'll eat it. I really don't want to get hit right now. I really don't. Come on, come on. Eat, eat my, eat the chest. Don't eat me. Now, see, I threw out that chest, and I think it's gone now. It's really hard to tell. It's really difficult. I can't, I can't tell if it's eating stuff or not, because I think it's more interested in me than some piddly item. But see, it walked over that chest, and that thing is just gone forever. If it hits me, it does not seem to be taking my strength effects. But I believe it will eat crops. I have some set over here to test that theory. Although the question is whether it only eats stuff when it's not terribly interested in me. So what I'm going to do is go into creative mode here and just see, see if it actually can be bothered to eat the crops. Okay, did you see that? It just, it just went whole hog on those crops. So it seems to be kind of random whether it actually eats stuff. It's probably random whether it takes the potion effects either. According to the mod info page, it should be able to do that, but I have not actually been able to demonstrate that behavior. So as of now, we are taking it on assumption. But anyway, I'm going to rate this probably... Probably do you even beef, bro, because it's just, it's not really that dangerous, at least not that I've seen. It doesn't do much damage. It's really annoying. It's destructive because it's going to eat your items. It's going to eat your crops. Like, if you throw your sword on the ground in front of this thing, that sword is probably never going to be seen or heard from again. But as far as actual beefiness, it's not very high on the list. Next mob we have is the turtle, and these are... Rather cool. They spawn in desert biomes, mesa biomes, ocean and deep ocean biomes, and also savanna biomes. There were actually some naturally spawned turtles in this savanna biome, but they seem to have kind of vacated the premises at the moment. But if you spawn one of these, they start out super tiny, and they eventually get to be pretty big. The female ones are pink, the male ones are gray, and eventually these guys will get to be rather large. Unfortunately, I cannot actually find you, the one that was wandering around here. Seriously, there used to be like 500 of them around here, now they're all gone. But just take my word for it, these guys get pretty big, about the size of a cow, and once they are grown, you will be able to ride them, at least the male version. The female version, I believe, is not rideable. They may add in some different features for it in the future. So as you can see, it grew, that one just grew up a little bit, and that one did as well. They are now in their teen phase. Eventually, they'll get to their giant adult phase. We might see it at some point. So I hit the turtle, and it's, it's just a passive mob. It does not fight back whatsoever. So that is going to be, do you even beef, bro? But we'll leave these guys here, and eventually they will grow up, and we can maybe see what they look like at that point. So the next mob up is the Gold Hoarder, and this one is particularly mean because it's the one that drops the evil fake blocks. It's found in hot biomes, once again. It only spawns during the day, and I believe it could drop real gold as well as fake gold, and there's really no good way to know what you get until you try to craft with it. So this is the Gold Hoarder. He's just this little kind of goblin-looking dude with, with a gold block. Weirdly enough, I'm not even sure if he's hostile. He doesn't really seem to be terribly interested in me. If I hit him, he still doesn't really seem to be very interested. So he's just kind of minding his own business. I honestly wouldn't mess with him just because he seems like a decent guy. He doesn't really want to cause trouble. But if you do kill him, he will drop some form of gold. And this one you could tell because not enough items shows you the ID. This is real gold. He can't also drop the fake gold. Which really sucks. So for that guy, definitely not very beefy because he, he's not going to fight back. He's just a decent guy. He's not your vicious guard dog that Frank is looking for. So do you even beef, bro? Next on the list is Mr. Creeping Bomb. And we will also do Mr. Exploding Bomb. Or I'm sorry, Mr. Exploding Boom and Mr. Creeping Boom. These guys are going to blow up. So we're probably going to go over where that big creeper hole is so as not to mess up our area. And they're pretty much the same. They both spawn in Plains Biome at unspecified times, and they are both explosives. So we're going to go check those out over by that giant hole. And now that all the blockling things are gone, you can kind of take a look at 
how deadly that is to the terrain. Seriously, if that thing ever gets charged, you're just rest in pieces. Oh, that's embarrassing. I just realized that the gold hoarder wasn't attacking me because I was in creative mode. Which I totally forgot I was in. So we better go back and just redo that. Let's try the turtle again. Yeah, the turtles... Did that turtle bite me? No, that's the... Oh my gosh, it's the hunger. The hunger is trying to attack me. I should seriously never go in creative mode just, just because of this. So we're just going to peaceful everything real quick just to be sure what we're doing. Okay, so so sorry about that. I did mess up slightly, so we're going to have to rectify that right now and see what the gold hoarder really does because maybe he is actually hostile. Let's check. He's actually running away from me. So I'm thinking maybe this guy really doesn't attack. I'm going to chase him down and find out, but there's I'm thinking there's a good chance this guy really is passive. Hey, buddy. What if I egg you on? Will you attack me then? Will you attack me? As you can see, he's quite fast. I think he really just wants his gold. I just, what, what, come on! Come on, mate! I just want to hit you once, and if you don't fight back, I will not take your gold. He's lagging me. I think my house is like the laggiest thing ever. Right, let's try Let's try a different one. So honestly, I think what I said earlier does still stand. These guys are just totally... They're basically cowards. They're hoarding their gold. They just want to be left alone. And they want their gold to be left alone. And honestly, you're probably not even going to be able to kill them very easily because they are absolutely crazy when it comes to running. So I believe this is the full-grown turtle here. This is the female, so you can't ride her, but I believe you can ride the male. Yeah, see, I can ride him. You don't need any saddle or anything. You can just get right on and control the turtle. And they're actually quite fast. So the turtles are done. This guy is still not very beefy. And we can finally get on to the exploding creeper things of death now that I'm in the correct game mode. The first one we've got here is regular Mr. Creeping Boom. So... I don't know what he's doing. There we go. He blew up approximately like a regular creeper. So that's like a creeper. He seemed to take quite a while to actually blow up. But I'm sure he will do it eventually, and then you're going to have a bad day when that happens. Let's just do one more to finish me off so I can test the next one with decent health. And it seems to be kind of random when he goes off, or maybe it's just when you get super close to him. I can't really tell. But be careful of that, because... He can mess you up, and he can definitely mess your world up. Now, this one is Mr. Exploding Boom, and I think this one is maybe a little more deadly. Let's see what this does. See, that's the thing. This one can get huge, and if it gets huge, really bad things are going to happen to your world. That's pretty much all you need to know. I let that thing get huge, and it literally just blew me up in one hit. So, pretty beefy on that one. Regular exploding bomb is probably going to be discount stake levels, but the big one, I'm probably going to have to rank that with, probably up with the mutated creeper. I am going to give that one beefiness over 9,000. I'm a little conflicted if maybe it should be just the whole cow, but it's pretty, I'd say that was a pretty decent sized explosion. Beefiness is over 9,000. And last one in this chest is the nether brain, which is a super weird name, and honestly it looks really weird too. And apparently it's quite evil, because it's shooting fireballs at my face. Ow! Making a giant mess of my world. Not cool. It's just, it's just going at me. It's doing a ton of damage. It's setting everything on fire. There's probably going to be a giant forest fire. Luckily, I did back up this world, so my house will not be permanently burned down. But this is just a mess. There's fire everywhere. And that guy's evil. No need to spawn in another one. We're going to give him beefiness over 9,000. Next up, we have a few more in this chest. I know there's like a bunch of mobs. This has probably been a super long showcase, but I hope you guys are enjoying me getting tortured by these evil, horrible things. Next, we have the Bone Cocon, I think, and the Wither Bone Cocon. And these are rather similar. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill myself here just because of the amount of health that I do not have. So basically this is just like a little bone thing. 
It doesn't seem to be terribly dangerous. It just kind of bites you a little bit. Not very beefy. Although it does have a fair bit of health. It definitely doesn't do all that much damage. And it just drops regular old bones, apparently not all the time. And this is the withered version. And this one's kind of cool because it actually has a special drop, which is um, withered bones, which are these guys. And these are useful because you can actually combine them with a skeleton skull that you might get from a charged creeper explosion or maybe the head cutter. And you can actually make yourself a wither skull, so that is probably an easier way to get those as well. But as for beefiness, I'm going to give them discount stake status. They don't do much damage, but they do seem to have quite a bit of health. And my world is just dead. I feel so bad. My house that I spent like two hours working on is just burned to the ground, which is just horrible. So next up, we have the Fire Imp, the infamous Fire Imp, and unfortunately this thing does fly, but this is the only way to get that Fire Imp wing to repair your trident. And I took the wing. Unfortunately, you can't just take the wing, you gotta get the stupid mob, and it's probably totally evil. This is the Fire Imp. It does float a little bit. It doesn't seem to be flying too high, which is nice. And it doesn't actually seem to be too deadly either. It just kind of hit me. It did set me on fire, which is annoying. My question is if they can shoot you from a distance. Because that's where these guys would be really dangerous. Otherwise, they're just kind of annoying. So they do float, but it doesn't really look like they can do damage from a distance, so their flying ability is probably not going to be all that deadly. And thankfully, they don't have all that much health either, which is probably a good thing, because otherwise they'd be pretty annoying. So since they do set that you on fire, I'm going to give them discount stake status. But I would not rank them as that beefy just because of their low health and their inability to have a ranged attack. Next up in here we have the Demonic Ender Eye, which is obviously fun. And actually, I've been, I think I forgot to go over some of these things. But you can probably tell where those guys spawn. This guy spawns in the end, unsurprisingly. And he does have teleporting powers as well, but, and he should drop an Eye of Ender. Let's see what this guy does. Okay, he just absolutely, he's just going berserk on my face right now. So he hits and then he attacks, which is just the most annoying thing ever. Please stop. Okay, that teleporting attack is super annoying. He will hit you and then he will go right behind you. It's like, it's the most annoying thing ever. Like, you just don't know where this guy's coming from and that could potentially be quite deadly. But let's just see how much health does he do and how much damage. He does not do much damage and he has about the normal amount of health, but... That teleporting move, pretty dangerous. I'm going to give him probably the whole cow, because he's a pretty tricky, dangerous little dude. I'm going to give him the whole cow. And as you guys know, the ratings are super subjective, so I, 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 can't, I can't verify that everything I'm doing is totally perfect. Here we have the, the uh, cave spider tribesman, which is probably going to kill me because I have like no health. And this is like a really weird humanoid looking spider thing that just murdered me. As you can see, I am not having a good day today and neither is my armor apparently. Wow, that is... My house is really depressing. So this guy's going to come at you. Apparently he can poison you as well because he's a cave spider. The only good thing about him is he's not very slow, but that was some pretty crazy poison. Let's see how much damage he does. He doesn't do very much hit points, but I believe when he poisons you... On second thought, I'm not actually sure if he poisons you or if I just accidentally stepped on the poison block. We're going to have to try that again, but if that was his poison, that's pretty insane. So let's see here what he does. I don't actually know if he poisons you. If he doesn't poison you, he's not that bad. He does a fair amount of damage, but he doesn't really have that much health. And I don't think he really hurts that bad. I would say he's probably going to be just your discount stake levels of beefiness. And seriously, I can never tell. That's poison three. That might have actually been him, because I think the sand... Does that give poison three? Because I was nowhere near the sand, right? i got to test this relative to the sand. So I'm in the sand, yeah. Here, I'll get out of the sand. The sand gives poison four. 
he gives poison three, so that was in fact his move. Apparently it's pretty rare that he does the poison, but when he does, do look out for it because it's pretty deadly. So anyway, since the poison attack is rather rare, I am going to let my original rating stand. I'm going to just put him as the discount stake, but do keep in mind that his attack can occasionally be considerably more deadly if it get, hits you with that poison three, because that stuff, not fun. And the last two mobs here are the Infernus Beast and the Jungle Beast. And I have like no health. So the Infernus Beast is this guy. He has a good bit of health. And he will set you on fire when he hits you. I'm not really sure what else he does because I only had the one hit point to really demonstrate with. So we're going to go ahead, head back past my mutilated, decimated house and see if we can find that guy. Here he is. So he's going to... He doesn't do too much damage, but he does hit rather hard. And he also sets you on fire, so definitely some annoyance factors that one. And it takes a while to kill him. You are definitely going to want to kill him, though, because, again, he drops an ingredient for your trident. So I'm probably going to rate him as discount steak, because he's pretty beefy as far as health goes. Actually, you know, just because of his health, I feel like I should probably give him the whole cow. But he's actually fairly easy to deal with just because of his relatively low, his, uh, his relatively slow speed. So I would say he's not that dangerous, but because of his high health and the fact that he sets you on fire, I'm still giving him the whole cow. And here we have the jungle beast, which is like the opposite, super fast. Doesn't have nearly as much health, though. Thankfully, I have my slowing sword. Honestly, if you can get your mitts on one of these, I would recommend it for pretty much everything, particularly the fast mobs. But like I said, I'm not actually sure if this is obtainable in survival just now. So that guy will drop some melon seeds and some stone, and he's pretty fast. Let's do one more test, see how much he hits. Okay, so he seems to do about three hit points of damage with... Some iron armor. I don't even have very much of it anymore. So I would say he's probably just a discount steak level of beef. And I believe, don't worry guys, thanks for sticking this out with me. But we're almost done. We're done with everything. And just to go over some things, those guys spawn in the nether and in the jungles. Pretty self-explanatory. The spider tribesman, by the way, spawns in forests and jungle biomes. You know, I get, forget to mention these after a while because it's kind of getting long, but as you can see, all the visual cues here should tell you what you need to know. And finally, we're moving on to those evil little block monsters. And what you're dealing with here is basically silverfish eggs that are blocks. We are going to spawn like a billion different kinds of blocks. And it's important that we look at all of these because they do actually have some differences between them. Because the material that they're made of kind of determines their health and other statistics like that. And also these guys should drop their block upon death, but we will find out right now, beginning with the end stone one. And I was like freaking out because it didn't spawn anything, but it will not spawn until I do this. And then it spawns this blocky monster, which I hope didn't hit for like a billion health. I think I must have just been low. If, that's, if that thing hit for that much health, we are in trouble. Okay, so it does about four hit points with iron armor. And it looks like it has twice as much health as you do. So this one's pretty strong. And it will drop some end stone. The nether rack one I expect to be not quite as strong. So yeah, that one, it looks like it's going to hit for about two or three hit points with iron armor. It doesn't set you on fire either, which is kind of nice. It is probably going to kill me because my skills are not that good. I'm going to go ahead and say the grass is getting in my way, and that's that's why. It's obviously the grass's fault. It has nothing to do with my skills, because obviously they're amazing. But that one's a little weaker. We do have a magma block one as well. Now the thing about these is they do not seem to be able really to be mined with the fist like a silverfish block might. I think you do, in fact, need a pickaxe for these. So this guy, he will set you on fire. Definitely look out for him. The magma block one, not too friendly. Also, I should probably hit him with something other than my pickaxe. That might be helpful. At this point, I'm just going to go whole hog and use the trident. 
Especially since it gives me some of that extra health. It's probably going to be important. What I'm trying to figure out is how he got behind me. I swear I somehow like launched him in the air and he landed behind my back or something. These guys are tough. I'm having... Like, these blocks are just kicking my butt today. So here we have the obsidian one. And this one is actually kind of nice because it actually looks different from normal obsidian. So in this case, you will actually know you're getting a block monster. All the other ones, though, look exactly the same. Ooh, that's some lag. Wow. I think his special power is making my die. die. So as you can maybe see, this guy has a bunch of health. He just murdered me while I was lagging, which is super low. He's got like 60 health. We'll see how hard he hits. Probably pretty- oh my gosh, he, this guy does some serious damage. The obsidian one is just absolutely deadly. So it's probably a really good thing that this does in fact give you some warning about this block, because this one, this one is pure evil. Seriously, you, you don't want to go anywhere near it. It's horrible deadliness. This is just pure deadly evil right here. So this one particularly would probably be super beefy over 9,000. Ow. You, you little jerk. Stop it! You're mean! You know, I'm, I'm done. I'm not even trying to kill that one. I have all the blocks here. Let's just move along. Got the uh, nether quartz one. Not too beefy. I really hate this 1.12 thing because now I have to like do the not spamming, which I don't like. I like spamming. It's kind of my pride and joy in life. So that guy's pretty average, not too dangerous. The diamond one could potentially be an issue. Let's see, how much do, does he hit for? Looks like about the normal amount of hits. Normal amount of hit points. Nothing like the obsidian one. That thing is going to hit you for like probably like 10 hit points with iron armor. You don't want to mess with the obsidian one. So here's the redstone one. He has 20 health. Seems to be fairly standard. Maybe hits a little harder than usual. Can't really tell. Nothing too crazy there though. Seriously, I'm pretty sure the king of them all is going to be the obsidian one. Real quickly here is the stone one, which has 20 health. Hits for about the normal two or three hit points. Kills me because... Do you even sword, bro? Hey, get back here. I'm, I'm not going to let you get away with that. You're in trouble now. You're in trouble, little buddy. I'm going to have to kill you for that. You do know that, right? right? Let's just get rid of him. He's dead. We have a few more. There's like a billion different blocks. So basically what this is telling you is don't trust any blocks. They're probably all completely evil. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because they're like tired of being mined or stepped on or something like that. But at any rate, they're obviously out for revenge. So be very careful. Oh my gosh, the obsidian one is back. This is bad. And seriously, look at the resistance on this. I'm hitting it with my sword and I don't even think I'm spamming. He's only taking like a couple of hit points of damage. That obsidian one is just an absolute tank. The emerald one, pretty normal, I think. Let's let's find out. Yep, hits for about the normal amount of damage. Has about the normal amount of health. I'm not really sure if that threw me in the air if it was the obsidian one that came to help. Probably the obsidian one, because that thing is absolutely evil. Maybe the emerald one threw me in the air. It's honestly hard to tell, but if I had to place a bet, I'd say it was the obsidian one. <laughs> I hate that one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the obsidian one. Don't. Just, I'm just gonna go. I am just gonna go. We have three more left to do. We're almost done, guys. We're almost done. I don't know if I'm saying that for your benefit or for mine, because it's now 1.30 and it's, it's super late. Please, just leave me alone, you evil block. You evil, horrible. Did I mention you're evil and I hate you? Oh my gosh, the obsidian one, it just, it's stalking me. It won't, it won't leave. Okay, the emerald one's almost dead, thank goodness. The iron one's about standard, I think, and I'm just gonna run because the obsidian one is not far behind. Just two more. We have lapis and we have gold. I don't expect these to be particularly beefy, but we will find out. We'll just go ahead and get the lapis one first. Hits for about the normal. Grass, grass is really cramping my style, let me tell you. 
So as far as the block monsters, they seem to have about 20 to 40 hit points, and they seem to do about 2 to 4 hit points on Iron Armor Normal Difficulty. The exception to that rule is the Obsidian one. So as for beefiness, most of those would go in just kind of your standard, I would say, discount steak or maybe the whole cow. Probably just discount steak, but that Obsidian one though, let me get this thing. This sucker right here is going to be super beefy. So now that we have reviewed all of the mobs and painstakingly tested them on my own poor Minecraft body, which isn't feeling so good right now, we have to evaluate which one would be the best pet for Frank, and honestly, I think it's down to two contenders. It's either going to be the Obsidian Block Monster because of its extremely high health, resistance, and damage, or it's going to be the Mutated Mushroom in Rain because it's basically invulnerable. And honestly, I can't really decide between which one of these would make the best village guardian for Mr. Frank. So what I'm going to do is I am going to call it a tie between these two. I'm going to shove these things in the mailbox for Mr. Frank to pick up at some point. These are, in fact, the winning mobs. They've gained the title of the beefiest beefy mobs that ever beefed. So once again, the Mutated Mushroom and the Obsidian Blocky Monster are the beefiest of all. So I hope you guys enjoyed this mod showcase. It might have been a little bit long because I tend to ramble on about stuff for too long and there were actually more mobs than I really realized. But I hope you got some useful information out of it and at least somewhat enjoyed my torture because that was most of the mod. But anyway, if you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like and please subscribe! means the world to me when you subscribe, and that way you will not miss out on other awesome Minecraft content like this. And if you have already subscribed, or if you just don't feel like it right now or can't, but you still enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought. Tell your friends if you want to, that we've got some awesome Minecraft content going on over here. But at any rate, that is going to be the end of this, and the end of my house apparently. Yeah, that thing's dead. But that's the end of this. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you on the next Minecraft video, and hopefully we'll have more mod showcases coming very soon. Goodbye.